Hey guys, I'm really sorry but I don't think I'm going to be able to make it back in time for the next episode. I think I might have got on the wrong boat. In this episode, we check out some of the hottest new indie games coming our way in 2013. We've got more goodies to give away thanks to our friends at Insert Coin Tees. And I spent a wet and wild weekend with Lara in Tomb Raider. Hi and welcome to Killer Bits. And uh, on this episode, we'll be talking about some uh, some indie titles and getting all hipster. Um, and also in the news, uh, the Wii Mini's out. No, it's not gonna. Yeah. No, it shouldn't exist. It should not be a thing. Okay, so that's out in two days mm. for eighty pounds. Delicious pounds. It's not worth it. Get a Wii U. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's not so worth it. Take Dom's advice and wow. buy one as soon as you can. Wow. <laughs> Don't! It's almost it. like it's almost you like Sony. It, you're actually dead to me. You're very serious. Dead to the fucking world. It's almost like Sony trying to trying to try to tell everyone to buy a PS Vita. We really would like it if you buy a PS Vita. I don't know. I suppose like if you're a forty year old woman that hasn't already bought a Wii, so you're like three percent of the population, maybe not buying a second hand one which you can soft mod and play ROMs on is the right way to go. Why don't you just get a Wii U? Because then it is basically it's backwards compatible, so you can just play Wii games on the Wii U, as well as playing Wii U games. So, where the fuck is the logic in a fucking Wii Mini? GameCube. Oh wait, it's got no control ports. So no. you can't even play GameCube games. No. I thought that I was gonna like what truck is, you. <laughs> what is the point? Uh, I don't think there is one. It looks nice. It looks lovely on your shelf. Mm. I mean, it doesn't wow. know what the PS4 looks a like. A fucking star for decoration, Nintendo. <laughs> Dicks. It's gonna be a box with buttons on. It is. Yeah. That's... Maybe a guarantee. Maybe a lights. killer bits guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I'm oh, well. just I'm just really annoyed. I'm that. glad I'm glad that we're still on that. <laughs> Back to the Wii Mini. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean it, it is coming out and if you want to get one, uh, although it may be pointless, uh, do so <laughs> at your own <laughs> Usually usually at this point, like I'd use that Nintendo thing to segue into our crafty Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate Wii U. How is it? Really is it good? I, have, I don't know, Ben. I have didn't... a friend who says monster instead of monster. Isn't that the weirdest thing? <laughs> is, is that I don't know how Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate is, Ben, because they didn't send us a copy. Uh, so wow. instead, I've been getting to grips with the Castlevania Lords of Shadow, colon, mirror of shit. Good then. No. It's weird. It's kind of... They've tried to fuse the old stage-based Castlevania style with the new sort of Metroidvania mm. style of uh, game, sort of, you know, with free roaming and collection. And because they've kind of tried to hit both marks, they don't hit either. And mm. it's this weird... So they're kind of, like, now. stuck in limbo. Talking yeah. of fuck-ups, uh, anyone seen the, the delicious EA release of uh, SimCity? It's a car crash. Uh, online, everywhere you look. The DRM didn't work, uh, the release didn't, didn't go well. Didn't have to well. give out like free games Gave to kind of say sorry. <laughs> there was issues with people buying it and But then again, it is, it is yeah. EA. Horrible, we all hate them. Oh really god, what do you mean? You. We're going to put microtransactions in every game. Mm. Yeah. Then like 20 yeah. seconds later, <laughs> we're not going to put microtransactions in every game. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry, we won't do it, but we will. Have, you, we guys, have you guys played Dead Space 3? Where you have to pay to customise your gun, mm -hmm. which is retarded. The load I do not like. Bigger bullshit I do not like. Mind. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple of weeks ago, we've had uh, the game, a video game BAFTAs, um, and uh, the, the winners were The Walking Dead with Best Story. Best Game went to Dishonored. I know you like that, Toby. Um, and obviously, Journey was the one that stole the show. And the BAFTA goes too. Journey. Again. Journey! Journey. Whoa. Taking with five BAFTAs, um, with original music and best game design. So, 
Uh, you know, I mean, it was, it was a big surprise. Apparently, that one. Journey uh, just makes you really high on life. I, I love it, Journey. I don't know. I played it, and it just made me sad. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but then again, like I don't know. Like look at the games that came out last year. It, it like if Dishonored is your best game, yeah. then you've got, you got issues. It was good, in yeah. my opinion, but I, I just don't think it was a worth best game. I'll have you gripped and put to work in the. A four-hour trudge, which rips <laughs> off Thief which you can't kill anyone in if you want the good ending. So that means that you literally are restricted to 25% of the game's arsenal. That is not a good, that's not good design. That's not even Having a game. binary moral choice isn't good game design. It's not your best game of the year, you stupid. <laughs> Talking of stupid, Randy Pitchford. Did anyone else see Randy Pitchford? I didn't. Oh, what you mean, BAFTA dropper. <laughs> Legend. He was, he was like a smooth criminal, wasn't he? He stole the stage. Uh, amazing. Uh, he dropped the ball with Alien and he dropped the BAFTA. Yeah, I, actually, I think they got to sort of, so let's watch, let's watch the audio nominees. But my favourite games of uh, last year were FTL and Journey, uh, both of which being indie titles. And uh, weird. a lot of stuff going on uh, in the indie world, which is, well, kind of exciting, uh, interesting. Um, and we, yeah. We've been playing a few games uh, from the indie world. Um, uh, I've been playing some robots. Robots? How's which, that? It just sounds like Northern Robots. A robot. I've been playing some robots, which uh, yeah, is standard. Yeah? Like, it looks a lot cooler than it is. I was really excited about having to go on that one. Yeah. It looked amazing, but yeah, um, yeah so it's, it's not anything special. No. Um, I've been playing Antichamber. Absolutely brilliant. Isn't it just Portal? No, it's not. Isn't it just <laughs> MC Escher Portal? It's MC Escher, yeah. It's, it's a first-person puzzle game set in a clean, white environment. It's just Portal. It's not. You've got to play it. It's okay. really, really good. You'll, so, you'll really enjoy it. I am all for like indie games, but only if they look really fucking interesting, which hardly any of them do. Wow! To me. Wow! Book and I know cover. everyone will agree with that. That is a really messed up thing to say. But look, I am look literally at, like, like... Look at Prison Architect. <laughs> Uh, By the same dude that made Darwinia. Yep, mm. that's right. And, which is uh, great. And Defcon, um, which is a, a fantastic game as well. And they, uh, it's, yeah, it's just a really good, fun thing. It's like a cross between a kind of, well, it's like a, a dark theme park, really. It's a yeah, theme park yeah. with a with a, a bit of a twisted theme. But yeah, it's good. I don't um, know what it is with me in indie games. I've not had anything that really properly makes me interested in it. I know that sounds really bad, but I have all respect for them because of like how much work goes in and I can understand that, fair enough, but if they're going to do something, oh, one of my favorite do games. it really fucking well. Okay, going back to <laughs> Castlevania Lords of Shadow, one of my favorite games of last year was Dust and Elysian Tale, mm -hmm. which uh, when we talk about overgrowth is not going to help me looking like a furry. <laughs> But no, that just, it basically, it did Castlevania better than Castlevania's done it for years. I, I agree with you on certain aspects. I was playing a game called Blade Symphony. Hey. Um, it's Unlucky. beautiful. It's exactly what you're talking about. It looks amazing uh, off, yeah. on the front of it. But underneath, there's nothing to it. It's just stabbing mid-air, basically. I mean, indie there's games no are something that I really do want to get into but I've not actually been attracted to any which made me go fuck I need that in my life I don't know, it's gonna I make my life so much uh, better oh, what's that game that just came out uh, on Steam it's uh, Strike Suit something or other oh it's yeah Strike Suit it looks zero, zero. Yeah, Strike yeah, Suit zero this. it looks amazing it looks like Lilac Wars mm. crossed with Gundam crossed That's with awesome. like every wet dream I've ever had <laughs> like seriously I remember like looking at screenshots and being like my laptop will never run this. Then I went on YouTube and started crying because my laptop will never run it. And we've got things like uh, in the pipeline, like Cube World. Uh, the, the, although I know you're not, you're losing a lot of faith in it. I think Her, it will there are just Minecraft with swords. <laughs> like swords don't work. Minecraft has swords, but unless you think that this is engaging <laughs> combat, you're done. <laughs> well, yeah, it's one of the ones coming out, and uh, uh, Overgrowth. Oh man, Overgrowth, stunning. Looks made stunning. by the same guys that made uh, Receiver, Receiver and seven day uh, game. Lugaru, which was yeah. like, my laptop does run that, <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely great. No, Overgrowth is something that I've been following for literally years I'm now. I'm quite excited about it. Not a furry, <laughs> but at the same time, it's still like, it looks incredible. The damage is based on like a rigid bone structure. Mm -hmm. The engine is made from the ground up. Stunning. Level editor, free running, nice front idea. flips. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, now you've said front flips, you've stopped me already. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's fucking, it, it looks it incredible. Yeah. I've been following it for three years, and it looks like it's finally going to come out of Alpha. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to pre-order and try the Alpha for yourself, you get a free copy of our new FPS game, Receiver. You can do that at wolfhire.com slash pre-order. If you'd like to hear about development news as soon as it happens, you can follow me on Twitter at Wolfire. So what's going to be the big indie game of this year? Well, I think that's the that's the, the, the question that can't be answered. I think with indie gaming, you don't look forward to a game as much as it just comes out of the blue and shocks mm. everyone. That's just generally Personally, what happens. I'm looking forward to Legend of Dungeon. Yeah, we're going to be doing a co-op thing with that. Mm -hmm. We should be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, another video. We're going to be doing a co-op thing. Oh, stuff. Critters! Oh, dear. Something's on my face. Yeah. Something's actually on. on my face. I'll go. Somebody help me. Okay, <laughs> fine. Face. I'm going to cut it's it off face. you. Get over here. Sorry, I'm getting nailed by... Ah, <laughs> oh, no, it's like that. Getting nailed. I'm trying. <laughs> there you go. You're free. And um, obviously the ones we've not mentioned, uh, Routine, um, is one I'm very excited about with Steam. <laughs> Uh, stasis is like an isometric kind of thing. We might have an interview with them coming up. Oh, that'd be good. So, yeah, that'd be really cool. Have a chat with them. Keep Wait. your eyes glued to our Twitter. Mm -hmm. Lovely social media <laughs> plug. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I suppose the thing that we should really mention is Mugenics, which looks like it might be the big thing of this year. Really? What, what is it? Mugenics is Team Meat's new project, oh, which right. uh, I know doesn't really say much <laughs> about the mm. game itself. It's a cat lady simulator in which you train and battle stray cats. Whoa. <laughs> uh, a cat lady simulator? Yeah, I know. Where you battle cats. Well, look at it this way. I mean, we've got forklift simulators. So <laughs> and why Euro not? truck simulators. So Euro why truck. legit? Euro truck. <laughs> so why lit? You know, fuck Keep it. trucking. Literally <laughs> cannot care about mugenics. Cannot care. This is what I mean. I don't know. Right? I, 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 I seem, uh, from, from what you've said, it sounds a bit off the wall. Just too much off the wall. Yeah, it's like team meet. It's literally like team meet. Yeah. Like, hey, hey guys, we're zany. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Check out what we can do. Yay. But this is what I mean about like the whole indie thing. Like, I see these kind of games and I get really put off and I'm like, what the fuck are you thinking? Do you have brains? Are you fucking... Yeah, I know, but you can't... You can't tell I can't judge from rush. just, you know, mm. but that's like all of, all of the ones that I've seen, I'm not... All of them. All of them. Every single one. Every no, well, game not, of all time. I'm not a fucking... Manic true. Miner. I don't know. Maybe you guys should just... Beat you to death? Yeah, do with that. With a rubber hose so it doesn't leave any marks? Bury yeah, you in right. the woods in four or five pieces? I'm up for that. Let's do that. Sweet. <laughs> So Lara Croft is back, our second most famous gun-toting archaeologist has returned to our consoles in Square Enix's new reboot of Tomb Raider. It looks amazing, plays fantastically well, Lara looks even more perfect in her new style. I admit, I wasn't too keen on her new look when I first saw it, but while playing I've kind of fallen head over heels for her. Apart from when she makes the little moaning noises after everything that she does, kind of makes things a little bit awkward as I feel like I've interrupted some kind of porno movie with some really hot chick cosplaying Lara. <laughs> Not that I'd be complaining much. I hate tombs. The animation in her hair annoys the crap out of me though, and not to mention how different her face looks to the trailers and posters, but that's another rant for another day. As with all the other Tomb Raider games, there's a fair amount of carnage and it's pretty horrific. Within the first few seconds of the game, you are literally having to set Lara on fire. It's gonna hurt. Ah! And then she gets dropped onto a nail that stabs her right in the kidneys. Surprisingly though, this doesn't kill her. You know, losing blood from being stabbed and being set on fire. Oh no, not Lara Croft. She can't die from all that, of course not. Although there are some pretty interesting ways of killing her, such as letting her be crushed by a boulder, getting mauled by wolves, and letting her accidentally slip off of a really high cliff to inspect the lovely terrain below. This game is literally an OCD sufferer's dream. There are so many collectibles, it's insane. And they're in the most awkward places half the time. You're able to upgrade her weapons too, as well as hunt for animals to survive on the island. It's a survival game, so what do you expect? 
Although there are a lot of quick time events in the beginning of the game, literally the first hour of the game is crawling in them. They do begin to become a bit more scarce as you progress through the game, but still. Quick time events will be the death of me. Please stop doing them now. I'm actually really enjoying the storyline as well. Crystal Dynamics have done an amazing job with it and the story has seriously, seriously grown me. Probably because I was so psyched for it to come out in the first place so I had really, really high hopes. But for real, it's so entertaining and it makes me jump in a few places. It really does set an amazing atmosphere when playing it. It fully immerses you into the gameplay and keeps you well on your toes. The controls are pretty simple to pick up and the sound is pretty good. You're also able to use a fast travel option so you don't have to run constantly from place to place. I guess that I should mention the multiplayer part. Even though I don't do multiplayer much and haven't actually played it yet as I'm not going for the trophies at the moment, but from the people that I've spoken to about it, it seems to have a good lasting impression. I see Tomb Raider as more of a one-man game, but hey, each to their own. I won't be playing the multiplayer in a hurry. I feel like it was a bit of an unnecessary addition to the game to make it seem more appealing to different audiences. <laughs> Tomb Raider really is an absolute fight for survival game. It's lived up to everything that I expected. It sets a good challenge and is a complete gem. It's really taken a new step in the right direction for Lara in the whole of the series. It's the 11th game within the franchise if you count Guardian of Light. But I am so glad that they saw past the Guardian of Light abomination that they spewed out of their brains and shoved in the world for us all to see. I'm just going to carry on with my life pretending that it never ever happened. I do love Tomb Raider a lot, but the quick time events are a little bit too prevalent, so I'm giving it a good old 7 out of 8 bits. Now you should go home, get a copy and play it forever. Okay guys, that's about it for this episode, but before we go, it's competition time and we've got to start by announcing who won last month's competition. The question for which was, what video game would you like to see as a movie? And all the MacGuffin to do with that, so that was great. <laughs> and uh, the winners were Canadian Gamers CG, who for some reason thinks that Uma Thurman is an appropriate choice to play Samus Aran. And uh, Ragnar Ter Blood Edge, who thinks that Hideo Kojima could direct a movie about as well as he could direct a video game. Since, you know, Metal Gear Solid 4 is already a movie, I don't know why they want one. Mm -hmm, exactly. And also, this month we've got a competition, and we've got three vouchers to give away from Insert Coin. Um, so, uh, get entering. Uh, the question is if you were shipwrecked on a desert island, uh, like Lara Croft, what video game character would you take with you? And why? I would take someone supple. <laughs> Super Meat Boy? No, no, someone edible and oh! <laughs> someone fuckable, edible. <clears throat> he takes all my boxes. <laughs> <laughs> the competition closes on Wednesday the 27th at 3 pm, so get entering and click the like and subscribe button. And don't forget to go on Facebook. And like yeah. us there at facebook.com slash thekillerbits and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com and don't slash get hacked. Because you got hacked. <laughs> yeah. um, also, I'll quickly mention again, I'm doing the fundraising next month oh, yeah. in March. I've been doing a lot of stuff with that. Um, so I'll, the link will be down below again it's, so you can fundraise. It's always nice oh, to yes. shamelessly plug something which isn't bullshit on this show. <laughs> and this actually isn't, which is... Cystic fibrosis, right? Cystic fibrosis. Cystic. Fibrosis. You can help. Fibrosis. You can help. You need to help because you need to do something. Man, Hugo Chavez is dead. Hmm? Huh?